Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a scheduled query in BigQuery and then use Zapier to send yourself a daily zap with the results of that query. This is something I actually set up quite recently for a client of mine. And it's a great way to set up essentially an automated process to help you identify uh, duplications in specific data sets. Uh, or tables rather in BigQuery and just have like an extra level of protection. Now, there's lots of ways you could set up such a thing. Um, if you've got data engineers that are writing code and you're essentially taking care of the ETL process yourself, then obviously you would leverage those resources and build um, a bit more sophisticated alerting. But this is kind of a quick and uh, cheap way to do it. So I want to walk you through that. So what you see on my screen over at the moment is I'm in BigQuery. This is the web interface. Basically access it via console.cloud.google.com forward slash BigQuery. And I'm in just a you know regular project. Um, and I've got a table here looking at tasks for Asana, which is the task management tool I use. And I've got a query here where I'm just selecting the IDs. I'm doing count star. That's going to give me the number of rows per ID. I'm going to group it by ID. And then lastly, I've added having count greater than one. This essentially is going to bring me a list of IDs which uh, appear more than once in the, in the table. Now, I could add another select on top of this and just do a count of the records. Um, but for now, this is this is good enough. And if I run this quickly, we'll see there's no results because there's no duplications. But let's just say, you know, you have a data set that you, you know, you, you've built using code, um, you know, you've taken like a raw table and you've written additional SQL to do some cleanup and you've added some joins and you're concerned that there might be you might end up with duplicates and that's going to throw off your numbers then this is a great query to run that check where you have your distinct key over here and then you're going to have this having count greater than one so now that we've got this query let's go ahead and set up it as a scheduled query so within the interface of bigquery you'll notice there's this little button here i can just click that and click on create new scheduled query and um, and then this little pane is going to open up. So we're going to go through each of these to understand what what we need to do here, um, what needs to be filled in. So first is the name of the schedule query. I'm just going to write ddoop check asana ask id. Um, then I've got to choose the frequency, right? I could do it hourly. Um, on demand, I think by the API, you can send triggers to run this. Uh, and there's all kinds of cool use cases for that. But we're not going to cover that in this video. I'm just going to do a daily check. And I could do start now. Or I can set a scheduled start time. So let's just say I'm going to pick um, from tomorrow. And I want to do essentially midnight. So zero zero. Well, this is actually got the AM PM. So let's do um, uh, zero 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 one AM. Let's see if that goes time zone. I'm not sure one's picking up France, but anyway. Uh, okay, so basically midnight Central European time from tomorrow looks good to me. Um, and it kind of gives you a summary here. This schedule run every day at 11 UTC. Okay, so maybe we want to run it um, UTC time. I like to do that. So let's just look at maybe United Kingdom will do the trick. Let me just change this and do that. That should do it. Okay, so midnight GMT time. Essentially, midnight UTC time, kind of standardizing it. Uh, it looks good to us. Okay, now the next thing I've got to do 
is BigQuery requires you to save the results of your scheduled queries as a table. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that by, I'm just going to take the same name of the query. I'm going to put it here. Maybe you'd want to add, you know, uh, you know, some kind of indicator that this is the results of a scheduled query. Not, not a big deal. Um, partitioning fields. We're not going to deal with anything, like any of that. So we can leave that blank. And then the question is, um, destination table, right preference. Do we want to append to the table? Or do we want to overwrite the table? Uh, the difference here is append is just going to add additional rows. While overwrite is going to replace the entire table. Okay. Now, in such a use case, it doesn't really make any difference, but you might want to set up a scheduled query that then is updating a table um, and you're keeping the entire history of the of each. So each time the scheduled query runs, it's just adding additional rows to the table, not updating any of the previous rows. So that would be append. You're just adding to the table. Overwrite would be you're literally dropping the table and recreating it with the results um, so if you just wanted a list um, of customers, for example, that meet certain criteria, you would probably do overwrite and then each day you would have that fresh list instead of keeping the history and then having to deal with, his, you know, historical loads uh, of the table. And then lastly, we, well, we've got some advanced options for the encryption. We're not going to touch that and notifications and you can read here. Owner of the schedule query receive an email notification if it fails. So that's kind of use, useful to keep on. Um, and that's basically it. So I'm going to click on schedule. And there we go. To see our scheduled queries, we have a section over here. Scheduled queries. And then you can see the scheduled queries that you have set up. And you can delete uh, or click through and modify your queries up here you would click edit and make any changes you need and you can see the history like the the run log for your scheduled queries so that's how to set up a scheduled query a really nice little trick that you can do after you set up a query a scheduled query is use a tool like zapier to set up um, basically a process where the results of your scheduled query are sent to you by a you know, email or Slack, because you'll notice when we set up this schedule query, there was no kind of, you know, send me the results as a PDF or something like that, right? There was no option. So we can use Zapier to do that. So I'm not going to go into all of it in this video, um, but essentially you would need the query, the schedule query to run at least once. I set it to midnight tomorrow, so we don't have, actually have it. So you're not going to be able to build your query, your zap, uh, excuse me, um, until the scheduled uh, query is run at least once. So keep that in mind, but I'll show you kind of briefly how it would be done. I'm going to go ahead and create, click on create zap. We're going to pick BigQuery as our trigger. Notice it's a premium um, what would you call this uh, app? So you need to be on one of the paid plans of Zapier in order to be able to use this. The trigger uh, event, there's only one query job completed. Click continue. You're going to pick your account, continue. You're going to pick your project. So if you've got lots of different projects, then, you know, just go ahead and click on it. Data set. So we're talking about Asana and table, Asana tasks. Um, once again, it's not actually going to find it because we haven't run it. So if I click test, well, actually it did find it, I think, because I ran the query previously. So that's good to know. I'm going to click continue. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick Slack. And I'm going to go through the process to set that up. Um, and then you can just run a test and see if it lands up in Slack. So at the end of the day, what you can do is you can end up getting results like this, where this is a, an actual um, workflow that I've got set up. 
uh, for one of my clients and you can see we're doing a, a dedupe on on a certain uh, object and i just basically get this sent to this justin sandbox channel each day and i just take a quick look and i want to make sure rose is blank and then we, that way it means we don't have any duplicates so that's that's kind of the goal um and it's a nice you know easy way to relatively easy way to set up a kind of an alert so if all of a sudden we had duplicates in this specific table then i would see a long list here and they would kind of raise raise an alarm and I, it's a lot less likely that we would end up making a change to the query creating duplicates and then you know we end up breaking the reports for days before we find it right so i'm over time setting up my slack account my agency slack account to be kind of like an alert system where all communication everything i need to know is coming into slack uh, and zapier is great at that so i hope you found this video useful um, if you have any questions on this process please let me know in the comment section below if it was valuable to you please go ahead and click the like button that helps you know, get the videos out to more folks and thanks for watching see you next time